Okay, we've been um, looking at uh, mechanical waves in chapter 15 of Young and Friedman's University of Physics, and we get to the fifth section of this chapter, which is on energy uh, in wave motion. Okay, energy in wave motion. Let's do a little review. So already in this chapter, we've derived uh, this equation, which basically says that y, the transverse motion um, of a wave, um, as a function of x, and as a function of time is going to be the maximum, the amplitude, times the cosine of kx minus omega t. Okay, that's earlier in the chapter that's been uh, derived. So we can take a couple of partial derivatives of this and get some stuff to work with here. Um, so if we want to know uh, how y is changing with regard to x, in other words, as we move forward with x, how is y changing? We take the par partial derivative of this equation with regard to x, and this is what we came up with. So the derivative of the cosine of x is the negative sine of x. Um, and so that's where the negative and the sine come from, from taking the partial derivative of this uh, cosine. So we had a, a is a, a constant, it's fine. Uh, but if I'm doing this, uh, taking the derivative of this with regard to x, then this goes to zero as I pull out to the front. And the derivative of kx is, is going to be k. So that's where the k comes from. So the negative sign comes from the derivative of the cosine. The a is a constant. And then the k comes from taking the derivative of this with regard to, to x. So there we have it. This is the, the, the way that y changes in relation to x. Okay. We can also take the partial derivative uh, with regard to time. Remember, partial derivative teach doesn't do the derivative of the whole thing. It just takes the derivative with re regard to one component of the thing. So this one uh, took the derivative with regard to the po component x and treated omega t as a constant. So this one, when I'm talking about how y changes with time, I'm going to take the partial derivative of this first one uh, with regard to t, and the kx will be treated as a constant. Okay, so um, the derivative of the cosine of x is the negative sine of x. So there was a negative sign down here. What happened to the negative? Well, when I take the derivative of this with regard to time, it becomes negative omega. There's the omega and then a negative and a negative cancel out. So that's where this comes from. And then I'm left with this. Okay, got some things on the, on the board. Well, why are you doing that, Ken? Well, let's keep digging. So what is power? Power is the instantaneous rate at which energy is being transferred uh, along a string. Um, so if you remember from chapter six, we had this equation, that power is the dot product of the vector force and the vector uh, velocity. Now, vector, 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 uh, Hannibal Vector, the uh, the vector velocity is basically this right here. This is the vector uh, velocity, right? Um, so, what is the vector force? Well, if we think of a triangle, and um, I haven't fully gotten my head around this, uh, but it it, it um, the chapter treats the the force here in terms of the the I would say restoring force, the force that's pushing back on the wave as it as it as it comes, and so uh, if the wave is moving um, uh, from left to right, the force in in this equation is conceived as pushing back uh, from right uh, to left. So it's going to be a negative, um, and then uh, they do a little trig. So you take the um, if if f if the magnitude f you know say the magnitude f pushing down. If the vector is pushing down like this, um, then uh, the uh, the part that is pushing uh, this way, or, or I'm sorry, the part that is pushing this way is the um, the d dy dx uh, thing. Uh, and so, uh, basically, do a little trig to find out what what this force. So we're looking for the dot product, which Part, takes the part of the force vector that is going in the same direction as the velocity. So if the velocity is moving this way, then we want the part of the force uh, vector that's also moving this way. And to do that, we're going to do a little trig. We're going to take the hypotenuse, the magnitude f, and multiply it by the uh, part of the vector going down, which is dy dx. Um, and we're going to do the negative of it. Uh, as that restoring force I was talking about. Basically, I'm explaining this. What is this we have here? Th what is this formula right here? Well, this dy, partial derivative of y with regard to t is the vector v. And then this negative f, partial derivative of y dx, 
is the component of the f that's going in the same direction as the velocity, the dot product. Okay, so there we have we've come up with a formula for the power uh, that is being conveyed as this uh, wave moves along a string. Okay, well on the previous page I derived uh, uh, what these two things were, so we can next move to the next slide. And there, so if we take that and we fill in what we had. Uh, from the other page, which is that this is the partial derivative of y with regard to x, and this is the partial derivative of y with regard to t, and we plug it in, we end up with this monstrosity, horrible, horrible formula, um, basically by multiplying these two uh, by each other um, and uh, doing a little uh, hocus pocus with stuff, you know, uh, substituting in for k. Um, so, for example, um, but uh, this is what we end up with, and it's it's a horrible horrible equation. Uh, but anyway, it works. I, I'm not suggesting you memorize it, uh, but it's something that you can certainly look up and and plug in. Now we can we can use this, however, to come up with a maximum uh, and average power. So, for example, the maximum of this equation is going to be when sine uh, squared x equals one, um, and then the the average is going to be, since it goes up and down and up and down, the average is going to be half uh, of, of, of this. Um, and so we end up with basically at its maximum, sine squared x equals 1. At its average, sine squared x equals half. So we end up with the maximum power, uh, the, the sine square drops out, and then the average power, um, it's half uh, and the sine square drops out. So those are two uh, formulas that are a little bit more manageable uh, that give you the maximum amount of power uh, for a sine wave um, in in terms of uh, remember m was the uh, uh, I'm sorry should that be mu that should be mu uh, mu f and mu f here this is basically mu is the um, uh, has to do with the 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 string uh, the string itself the qu quality of the string uh, okay um, so uh, that's the first part of this section. Wave intensity is the other part of this section. So for 3D waves, intensity is the average power per unit area, the average amount of power per unit area. And this, uh, this is the average rate that energy is transported by the wave per unit area. So what we find with, uh, with the, this uh, is therefore that the intensity uh, of the wave is the power divided by the area for pi r squared, for example, uh, if it's moving. Uh, in a circle, if it's moving out in a wave, in a you know a circle, like that, you know. So, um, the the intent this is spreading out, of course, over a increasing um, area, um, but it's going to be equal in its totality, um, and so uh, the the power at at R one uh, is going to basically the the total intensity at R one is going to equal, um, or the power at R1 is going to equal the power at radius 2 as well. Um, it's just going to be distributed out over uh, an increasing area. So if we do a little little math, what we find is that there's an inverse square law for intensity. That the intensity at R1 and the intensity at R2, uh, basically intensity 1 divided by intensity 2 is equal to um, the square of the flip, that, that is the square of the intensity at R2 divided by the intensity at R1. So this is useful, for example, with regard to earthquakes and how the, the power of that earthquake wave is going to be distributed uh, as we get increasingly uh, further away from its, its point of origin. Well, this is not a particularly easy uh, section to explain, uh, but uh, hopefully um, the formulas are clear enough to use.